ice, wash everything away, the ice. Just scrape the ground about 30 feet in. All of it just went down and drained that way. This wheel floated away during the flood. Put up on the bar to try to save it in the fall, but the water got too high and it floated away. It floated down the stream, so I gotta build a new one. So. The fish swims up river and the current turns, it, turns the wheel. As the fish comes up, they, we put a fence we call underwater, so the fish bumps it and moves out to the wheel. And then the wheel is powered by the river and it turns and then it scoops it up and we have a chute into the, and then we have a box and it goes into the box and it's devastating because we need the fish, we eat the fish, that's what we have. And uh, with all this high water and bank cutting away and there's, there's a lot of uh, drift coming down so that, that really, uh, you know, bang up the wheels, bust them and sometimes pull them out and then uh, We'll have to spend a day or two, you know, to try to retrieve it up, put it back or get it fixed. And then by that time, the salmons are going to be gone. In the interior of Alaska with these small communities and native villages, um, a lot of the things, there's not a lot of the normal amenities uh, that we might find in uh, some other typical community in the United States. Many of these communities, uh, by tradition or, uh, or culture, are subsistence lifestyles where they hunt, fish, uh, gather food uh, in preparation for the winter. Uh, so I think it's very important that we recognize that whether we're buying an all-terrain vehicle or fishing equipment or different types of things that some would think are more of a recreational luxury are uh, critical to the survival of the disaster survivors up here. It's uh, our tradition, that's what we do. We fish for salmon every year. We've been doing that for years. And people before me have been doing that, so it's important that we do that. For food, put fish away, dry fish away for the winter, and, and that's our tradition. Subsistence way of life, I guess they call it. The whole, the family, you know, from the grandparents to the babies, they eat it. Everybody eats it. You know, it's, it's like a main diet when we got it in the morning, afternoon, and at night. I think what makes this unique is that working together uh, between the state, uh, the boroughs, uh, you know, the Native Americans and the villages, is you really don't have time to argue about how things should be done. You need to work closely together, think, think about the outcomes, and uh, we're taking a look at how these communities uh, are going to rebuild, working with uh, other federal and state partners to try and influence and help them as they rebuild so that their communities are stronger and more resilient for the future.